you for joining us for Discover NAU. I am grateful for this opportunity to speak with you about becoming part of the Lumberjack family. As you explore educational opportunities, we recognize that you have many choices, and so I want to thank you for considering NAU. Our number one focus is on your success. We offer a unique educational experience centered on your individual passions, ambitions, and preferences. At NAU, you are part of a close-knit community that provides academic and social experiences that will help you discover who you are and what direction you want your life to take. You will also enjoy the beauty of this region and the community of Flagstaff, ranked as one of the top college towns in the country with a great quality of life. We hope that what you learn today will inspire you to bring your aspirations to NAU. Enjoy today's program and go Lumberjacks. Good morning and welcome to Discover NAU. Thanks for joining us for a, another virtual Discover NAU. We had a, a couple of those this spring. Excited that we're able to join all of you joining us from around the country and around the world to learn more about NAU today. Uh, my name is Chad Eikoff. I serve as Director of Admissions here at Northern Arizona University and I'm joined by my colleague Annika. Good morning, my name is Annika Olson and I serve as the Vice President for Enrollment Management here at Northern Arizona University. Certainly back to school has never looked like it does today. We know for you seniors and other high schoolers joining us this morning and you parents, so many adjustments ha have had to be made. We've adjusted here on campus as well, and you can see some of those listed on the screen. We've changed dining and housing to make sure that students stay safe, socially distancing. All masks are required on campus, and our academics look a little different as well. With changing the capacity in many of our academic classrooms, our NAU Flex technology and the amazing faculty here have adjusted to make sure they're delivering the high quality academic experience our students have come to expect. So lots of things look different. Many of the, the pictures and videos we're gonna share with you today were taken pre-pandemic. Never fear, we are practicing social distancing and mask wearing throughout campus, although not all of our video and pictures may show that. So I did wanna make mention of that. We also appreciate you joining us virtually for this Discover NAU, or as we like to call it, DNAU, to learn more about what our campus has to offer. Chad's gonna get us started with sharing a little bit about our academic structure here at NAU. And when we talk about fit at an institution, and really I think Discover NAU is about figuring out if NAU is that right fit for you, uh, there's kind of three types of fit you should be looking for. Academic fit, which we're gonna start talking about academics first, then we're gonna jump into some things to help you determine social fit, if NAU is the right social fit for you. And then lastly, financial fit is what we'll be looking at. So those are kind of three types of fit that you as a student, you as a family should be considering. Starting off with the academic piece of things, uh, we pride ourselves on trying to keep that class size small, that student to faculty ratio, keep that small as well too. And really individual attention and relationships with students and faculty um, with, throughout their educational experience. We have academic, nine different academic colleges, one of those being our graduate college, which we aren't gonna be focusing on uh, specifically today, but we will take a quick look at each of those other eight academic colleges where your nearly 100 undergraduate programs uh, could fall under. Um, to explore that full list, you can certainly visit our, our catalog on the website and find all of our degree programs there, but we're gonna give you kind of a high level view to understand how that all breaks down. I should also mention the, the one NAU component. Uh, NAU does have sites throughout the state of Arizona, as well as uh, online programs as well too. And when we had to shift gears this spring with the pandemic, we were able to quickly adapt to the online method because we've been doing online education for a very long time. 
So we're going to dive into the colleges and start with our College of Arts and Letters. Great. Thanks, Chad. So one thing to make mention of before we jump into all the colleges is to, to understand as a student here, you will be taking classes in probably almost every college through our liberal studies requirements. So although your major may not be listed in this first College of Arts and Letters, you most likely will be taking at least one or a, a small handful of classes in this college. The College of Arts and Letters is one that houses the traditional college majors from philosophy, history, and English. It also houses our performing arts, theater, and music, as well as art, with students displaying their artwork throughout numerous galleries around campus. Let's go ahead and listen to a, um, a student in the College of Arts and Letters in music education. In the College of Arts and Letters, specifically being a music education major, you have a lot of opportunities to be in music ensembles, and that would include orchestra, band, and choirs. And something really cool about that is if you audition, you can get a lot of scholarship money for just being in them. So great to hear from some of our students. And we're going to be bouncing around to some videos so you really get the flavor of what being a student at each of these colleges is like. So let's head over to Chad to talk to us about our next college, the College of Education. Yeah, our College of Education is certainly a point of pride for us here at NAU. We were founded as Arizona's Teachers College, and to this day, graduate a lot of teachers. Uh, we have CAPE accreditation, which we are the first and only institution in the state of Arizona that has that highly prestigious CAPE accreditation. Really pride ourselves on trying to get students in the classroom early on working with students. Um, but again, we want to let you hear from one of our students. So uh, we're going to hear from Cameron, uh, one of our College of Education students. So the first thing I did was I joined an intramural soccer team because um, I played soccer since I was three years old, um, played competitively in high school. And I wanted to keep that going. I wanted to stay fit in a way that I enjoyed, and that is soccer. Up here, Everybody wants to learn. Everybody is excited to learn what they're studying. And then it's just a whole different atmosphere because people can just dive deep into their studies and be passionate about what they're doing um, because they're choosing their path. They're choosing what's gonna happen for them down the road. Um, and it just makes the environment completely different. So I am an elementary education major with a concentration in foreign language. And my biggest goal in life is to make an impact. And I think teachers are some of the most influential people in a child's life and they really do make that impact. Um, and in the terms of going into foreign language, uh, when you work in underprivileged schools, a lot of parents um, from Spanish-speaking homes cannot speak English, so having that second language is going to be really beneficial when it comes to parent-teacher conferences and things like that. And not only can I make an impact on the students, I can make an impact on their parents too. So I'm taking a class right now, ESC 280, which is um, a class that talks about um, students with special needs. And I grew up with a cousin who had Down syndrome, um, and he was like my best friend growing up. So learning how to work with those kids in schools is gonna be really eye-opening to me because I know how to do it on a social aspect, um, and it might be different because he's family, but learning how to do that on a professional kind of level is gonna be really important for me, and I'm really excited to get into my practicum next semester um, or next year. And I just, I can't wait to like put everything I'm learning into like action and see if this really is the right fit for me. So great to hear from Cameron. I always love watching his video and especially that beginning when he's out playing soccer there on the South Fields. Our next college is the College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Science. That just rolls off the Ki tongue. Kios, I think we tried to Kios, say Kios, right? yes. <laughs> So a number of different opportunities for students from day one to really enjoy hands-on learning, taking what they apply and learn in the classroom and using it as they're using that design for practice that all the engineering classes enjoy. Certainly, informatics, computing, and cy cyber systems is an up-and-coming field and has been for a number of years. And our department in, in college um, really has so many great opportunities, internships, externships for students to enjoy. Again, to take what they've learned in the classroom and really apply it. Let's go ahead and hear from Cato on his experience in this college. 
Hi there, my name is Cato with the College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Sciences. Most of the programs within this college are ABET accredited, um, so the curriculum itself is very hands-on. The professors are very engaging with their students, and you can tell that they want them to succeed. Um, I'm just very blessed to be a part of such a great college. This is a great time to tell you, if you have questions you would like us to ask students during that panel, we're gonna have a couple of students joining us, if you could email admissions at nau.edu with that question, and we'll uh, be collecting some of those and looking at those and then asking uh, students those questions later on. So again, admissions at nau.edu if you have questions. So next up is our College of the Environment, Forestry, and Natural Sciences. CEFINS is the acronym that uh, we make that into. And forestry is one I wanna draw your attention to. We do have the only forestry program in the state of Arizona. Uh, potentially the only forest, uh, <laughs> debatable there. Um, and we have, because of that, a large uh, university-owned forest where our students are out getting that hands-on experience. One of our other very large programs that we have here on campus is biomedical sciences. And we're gonna have the opportunity to hear from Danielle next now, uh, one of our biomedical science students. So let's hear from Danielle. Hi, so my name is Danielle. I'm from Mesa, Arizona. Um, I'm a junior this year and I'm majoring in biomedical sciences and I'm double minoring in chemistry and sociology and I'm also a student in the Honors College. So I do volunteer at the Flagstaff Medical Center in the emergency department. It's mainly comprised of just stocking like the IV cards, patient rooms, interacting with patients as well. And from those experiences, I've learned how triage works essentially. So when a patient is first admitted into the hospital, how they're assessed and how certain patients are ranked higher in terms of when the physician will see them. I've learned that whole process, which is great. And there's also opportunities to shadow the physicians at the hospital as well. So I've done that numerous times. I've shadowed multiple phys physicians and I've seen patients that have cancer, some people that just come in for cardiac problems, and I get to see how they're assessed by the physician, what steps they take after that, how the physicians refer them to other specialties, and that's just really opened up my eyes, and it's a great way to put my foot into the door as I am interested in becoming an emergency room physician myself. And then I also do research here with bioinformatics, mainly looking at the TP53 gene in mammals and investigating that with cancer in mammals and humans. I do take a lot of credits every semester and then I also do a lot of off-site involvements and on top of that I am studying for the MCAT exam for medical school. But for de-stressing I love to play with all three of my cats and then I also just do small things that I enjoy so just like playing the violin or reading for like 20 minutes every single night and just like enjoying that like small little bit of time and then I can get back to my priorities and focus on school again. Next is our College of Health and Human Services and certainly now more than ever this college is highlighted. I would also like to take a minute to shout out to all of our healthcare workers in our own community, as well as communities around the country. Your tireless work during this pandemic is certainly not taken for granted. Our College of Health and Human Services has two competitive programs, both nursing and dental hygiene, and other popular programs such as public health and health sciences, just to name a few. Let's go ahead and hear from Alyssa, who's one of our bright stars in the nursing program. I knew you made me feel really at home whenever I connected with this girl down my hall. We were both living in McConnell at the time and she was like two doors away from me and we had a um, hall like dinner at the Dubai Center. So we all went and she was wearing a cheer jacket, like a, her whole a high school cheer jacket. And I was like, oh my God, I cheered. And she was like, I cheered. And so then we connected off of, we both cheered. And we established like a friendship. We were both kind of like scared to go out of our comfort zone and scared to meet new people, but we encouraged 
encourage each other to like go and find new friends and go sit next to people and go to like SI sessions and um, go to the running of the freshmen, which is really fun. I remember me and her both um, were super nervous because we were not ready to run a football field. I had feeling the adrenaline rush and just sitting down in the stands and like feeling like this is what a college football game feels like and like kind of feeling like this is NAU. This is going to be where I'm living for the next four years. So I think at that moment was like very breathtaking for me. The class that I took that really intrigued me into public health and why I wanted to go this direction was um, Anatomy 202, and that's the physiology of the human body. So the digestive system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and I was just so intrigued by like all of our systems in our body and how they connect and work as one. Um, and it just intrigued me to be like, all of our body works in different ways and no one's gonna be the same. Like all of our bodies are different. Um, but we have one core function, like the cardiovascular systems pretty much similar to everyone. Um, I don't know, I just like, NEU just has like this special like feel to it. Like everywhere I go on campus, like I can feel like I'm connected to someone. If it's like the Chick-fil-A worker or like <laughs> um, walking into like the math lab, like I feel like they're eager that I'm there and that like, how can I help you or that kind of feel. Thank you, Alyssa. Next up, our College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Lots of very people focused majors psychology, sociology, anthropology, all are going to be within the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Theology school. The, the ologies, yes, all of the ologies. Um, also within there is going to be the communication uh, focused thing. So our School of Communication falls under the umbrella of the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. So student run newspaper, student run radio, student run television. We're in a television studio right now. Um, here on campus. So we're going to have the opportunity to hear now from one of our students who decided on a major within the School of Communications uh, under the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. So uh, here's Carrington. When I started applying for colleges, I was set on staying in California and my aunt was like, oh, you should check out this school called NAU. I looked at the website and I automatically fell in love with the school based on the website. I don't know what it was, but I signed up for a tour and I came to visit the school and that just made me want to come here even more. And yeah, I came to NAU. So originally I was a public health major. I ended up switching to comm and that was the perfect major for me because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have found my internship, which I love. I interned with NAU Social and it's basically, we help run as interns the social media for the school. And we get to go to a lot of events and we get to get content. And sometimes I get to write blogs, which is fun. That's my favorite part. And we just, it's a little family that I got on campus. So definitely don't limit yourself um, if anything, like even if you're like me, set on not, or if you were like me, set on not going to school out of state, at least apply, because you never know, you could change your mind. And also, when you do get to school, to just enjoy every minute of it, because it does go by really fast. Next is the W.A. Frankie College of Business. And our College of Business houses our traditional business majors such as marketing, management, and economics. In addition, it houses our very highly ranked School of Hotel and Restaurant Management. You can see some of those bragged rankings there on the screen. And one of the things that is absolutely one of my favorite things to do on campus is to head over to the HRM school and look at what's being cooked up in that test kitchen from, fr from scones to scones and my favorite <laughs> food scones. No, just so many opportunities for students even out of this college to interact and learn. Students in this college get hands-on experience through our Student Management Investment Fund, internships with um, key leaders in the business community around the state, and of course that hands-on experience in the School of HRM with our very own conference center um, in, in collaboration with the City of Flagstaff here on the north part of the Flagstaff campus. So tremendous opportunities 
for students here. Let's go ahead and listen um, to a bit more about the Frankie College of Business from AJ. I've absolutely loved my almost four years in the College of Business so far. I think the business ones specifically promote an environment of professionalism, which is very helpful in the field of business. My favorite class in my major was Management 340, which was titled Business Ethics. I just found it fascinating how they were able to combine a business class with a philosophy class. And it was a class that was almost completely based on discussion because there was no right answer to some situations. So it was just kind of getting to the resolution of what would be the best for most people and that's what you'd have to do as a manager is kind of have to look out for your team and your company as a whole and I think it's good to practice those. It's just so much fun being around the same people and getting to know them and knowing that you're all striving towards the same goal. Last but not least of the eight colleges that we're going to talk about today is our Honors College and who better to tell you about our Honors College than the Dean of the Honors College. So I'm going to throw it over to Dean Gustafson uh, to hear more about the Honors College. Hi, my name is Kevin Gustafson. I'm the Dean of the NAU Honors College and I'm here to invite you to a great academic opportunity here at Northern Arizona University. The NAU Honors College is the small college experience in the middle of a big, bustling research university. Two main features distinguish our innovative curriculum. One is our approach to liberal studies or general education requirements. Instead of taking large introductory lecture courses in various disciplines, students in the Honors College earn liberal studies credits through taking small, discussion-based interdisciplinary seminars on topics ranging from mystery of the brain to culture, race, and democracy to Harry Potter to Game of Thrones. All students at NAU take a three-credit capstone in their major. Honors students take a six-credit capstone. And we encourage students to really think outside the box, to use these projects to meet a specific personal, academic, or professional goal. Some students will do work in their major. Other students do something completely different. They may be an engineer by training, but they have a passion for painting. It's a chance for honors students to have a truly individualized educational experience, one that is geared to meeting their personal, professional, or academic goals. The other pride of the Honors College is our brand new living learning community, which opened in August of 2018. The Honors Residential College has, on the academic side, has seven state-of-the-art classrooms. It has honors advising, a writing center, faculty office, administrative offices, all the things you need to have a truly supportive academic community. The residential side has housing for 620 students with two different types of rooms. A standard double room has two beds, two workspaces, but each double room has its own bathroom in it. The other floor plan has two entrances, two single rooms with a shared bathroom in between. So if you are the kind of student who appreciates small classes with invigorating discussions, who wants a truly individualized educational experience, who appreciates being pushed but also supported as you meet your personal and professional ambitions, then I hope you'll join us at the ANU Honors College. Thank you. I absolutely love hearing Dean Gustafson talk about the Honors College. You can just hear how passionate he is about honors education here at NAU and the experience that we're giving our students. One experience that I, I want to plug and talk about that it's a personal regret of mine that I didn't take advantage of a study abroad experience is studying abroad. I, I want to really encourage students to take advantage of study abroad opportunities and NAU does a great job with study abroad. You can study abroad all around the world, lots of opportunities for that. One program I particularly want to draw your attention to is the Interdisciplinary Global Program, IGP. And with that, it's a five-year program and you end up with two degrees and spend one year abroad. So you're gonna, it's either gonna be a business degree or a STEM degree mixed with a language. So for instance, maybe business in Spanish, and you spend a year abroad in Spain immersing yourself in the culture and in the language. Also our National Student Exchange, 
Uh, we've got partnerships with institutions around the United States and Canada where you could go there for a semester and maybe check out a potential grad uh, school spot or a city you might want to live on, live in uh, when you complete your degree. But that's enough of me talking about it. I want you to see some of the experience that our students have. So let's take a look at this video. Well, if that video doesn't give you the travel bug, and also one of my greatest um, regrets of my undergraduate career is not taking advantage of those studying elsewhere opportunities. So, so certainly check it out. And you saw our students were having some amazing experiences there. Next, I wanna to talk to you about our number one goal because it involves you as a student in your success. Again, our number one goal is that when you start your educational journey here at NAU, we want you to complete that degree and, and do so in a way that you're gathering experiences that'll last you a lifetime. So to enable students to be successful in the classroom, we have a number of support systems. They are all listed on your screen. And a little different than some other institutions, our career advising and tutoring services are all free for, for all students, which is really important to take note of. We have a number of students that work not only on campus, but around the surrounding community. And that's where Handshake comes into play. Students can upload a resume, even do mock interviews and, and get help with that cover letter for applying for jobs while they're in college or that first job right after they earn their degree. Our peer jacks, mentoring programs and supplemental instruction help to ensure your success in the classroom and get you connected out of the classroom. Because so much of that is about your social fit, as Chad mentioned earlier. One of the biggest mistakes our new students make is not utilizing these services fast enough. So they wait until they get that first midterm grade and maybe it isn't as easy and studying isn't as easy as they thought it would be. And so they wait until that, that point in the semester. Don't wait, take advantage of um, those study groups. And even now that they're meeting remotely on Zoom and in lots of different creative ways, take advantage. Don't just take my word for it though. Here's a couple of our renowned faculty members to give you a little, their little nuggets of advice. Let's take a look. Some general advice for students, don't obsess about your grades. Uh, your grades do not define who you are. Uh, instead, maybe obsess about learning how to learn. If you can develop that, the grades will come. One piece of advice that I could give to NAU students to be successful would be to learn what an informational interview is and to conduct as many of those as you possibly can. There are so many different classes and subjects and topics. Sometimes we get focused on one particular path and don't realize that there are so many other things to explore. If you just work hard, you really work hard, everything else tends to take care of itself. And um, I really believe that, and I've done that in my life, and it's, it's worked for me. Put all these deadlines and due dates in your smartphone or whatever else you use to organize yourself, but also schedule time for, time for friends to go outside and definitely set a time to go to bed and sleep. My best advice for students is to communicate with your professors. The more you communicate with us, the better we can communicate with you. One of the first things you'll see as you come here as a student is that everybody wants to eat up your time because they're hungry for it. 
You gotta defend your space, you gotta defend your time, you gotta defend a sense of who you are. Great advice from our faculty. Um, so we mentioned at the beginning the different types of fit. So we kind of first touched on the academic fit and if you see that yourself uh, fitting in here at NAU. Next up, we're gonna talk about the social fit before finally touching on the financial fit thing. So transitioning to the social fit, one of the big parts of fit is the city you live in, right? So Flagstaff as a college town, uh, I've, I feel lucky to be calling Flagstaff home for the last 12 years. Um, we are much different than the rest of Arizona in many ways. I'm a Minnesota native and I thought all of Arizona was desert and cactus and really hot. We're in the mountains at 7,000 feet elevation, so we do get all four seasons, get a decent amount of snow, but lots of sunshine as well. We are the world's first international dark sky city as well, and with that, we have uh, regulations around light pollution, and the stargazing here is absolutely amazing. The Huffington Post actually named us the best city in the world for stargazing. So while you're here in Flagstaff and at NAU, make sure you're looking up at those night skies. It is absolutely beautiful. Also, outside of the Flagstaff area, lots to explore, and I certainly encourage our students to do so. Many national parks and monuments, just a short drive away from campus. So get out, explore those. Also within the city, our uh, Flagstaff urban trail system, which during this time of social distancing, I have certainly utilized those. Most every night after work, I will get out and explore one of those trails around my community and, and around town and campus. Uh, lots of opportunities to get outside. One, with, with those outside opportunities, certainly we utilize that for our classroom, and many of our classes take place outside, but also recreation as well too. And we're gonna take a look at some of our students uh, checking out Chocolate Falls. Exploration is traveling to a place to learn about it. Here in Northern Arizona, you can find places that take your breath away. These NAU hikes give me a sense of discovery of a place where I belong. Find your place at Northern Arizona University. So great to look at those chocolate falls is just one of the countless areas to explore um, in nor the northern part of this state here and mentioning those urban trails. I've lived here for almost 25 years and found a whole new part of the urban trail the other day while I was out and about on my mountain bike. So just when you think you've seen it all, you find a new section to explore. So, so exciting to be able to do that. Certainly being part of a campus community is living in that community. And most of our new first year students do choose to live on campus. We don't require it, but in any given year, 90% of our new first year students do choose to live in our campus residential halls. It is a two-step process. So once you apply and you're admitted to NAU as an institution, and let us know that you plan to be a lumberjack with us, we ask that you apply for housing. And we do that because um, we organize our residence halls into residential colleges. So you heard Dean Gustafson talk about the honors residential college for our honors students. We have residential colleges and organize those by major throughout campus. So for example, if you're a business major, you'll be housed with other business majors. We know this helps with the student success and getting connected, not only in the classroom, but out of the classroom as well. We also have a number of different housing options for transfer students and, and families as well. So tremendous amount of opportunities there. So we know in this virtual environment, you don't get to join us on campus and see inside a residence hall. So Carolina's here to do that for us in the next video. Hi guys, I'm Carolina. I'm a senior here at NEU. My major is communication science and disorders. Um, I'm gonna be a third year RA in Gabaldon next year. So today I'm just gonna be taking you on a room tour. Cool, so to start off, we're gonna start talking about the beds here. Um, all of the beds are loftable and bunkable and you can adjust them um, for storage. So it takes about three, um, two or three people to adjust the bed, just so you're aware. 
Moving on, um, each student in this space has their own desk and then they also have their own drawer space in the room, <laughs> as you can see. So each room comes with their own closets um, for each student, so there's a lot of space for um, clothing and other valuables. Um, so each room also comes with their own fridge. Um, it's pretty spacious, so just like be courteous to your roommate and just talk about that things, communicate. NU has their own virtual reality that you can go on to the NU website. Um, it's very specific to the room that you're staying in, so just go look that up to see kind of like how your room is set up and then you'll be ready for move-in day. So I want to make mention that none of our residence hall rooms where residents live have glass doors. We have that glass door on that room because it is our showroom that we show when students come to visit us. So I did want to make note of that. I also wanted you to make note of that those refrigerators are fully capable of housing full half gallon ice cream containers. Another favorite of mine. That's an important insight there. Yes, it, it, good to know. It, it's critical. It's not like one of those little tiny refrigerators where you can't do that. Speaking of food, um, next is our on-campus dining options. Most of our students um, have and enjoy one or all of their meals on campus. We have over 25 different retail locations and two all-you-care-to-eat dining facilities. Certainly today those are spread out and we've even included some outdoor dining spaces in many of those. But if you didn't want to go to one of those places, you could use one of the Starship food delivery robots. And as I was on my walkabout around campus today, during lunchtime, I was witnessed to four robots as I was walking on the trail, delivering food to students um, right during lunchtime. So the robots are working very hard right now. Yes. <laughs> the robots are working extremely hard right now. As I mentioned, there's a number of meal plans to choose from and dining dollars. And even as a staff member, um, we choose one of those plans. Um, so we can enjoy whether it's Einstein's or, or coffee at Starbucks or um, in our 1899 bar and grill, which you see there on the screen. But don't take my word for it. Corbin's gonna share with you a couple of his favorites. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, I'm Corbin, just outside of our university union, where a lot of different dining options are here for students. Here at NAU, we've got 27 different dining options, ranging from Chick-fil-A and Denny's to Einstein Bros bagels and Jamba Juice and anything in between a student can find their liking here on campus. My personal favorite is called The Green Scene. It's on the third floor of the HLC. So once you're here at NAU, definitely come check it out. Thank you, Corbin. Another important thing we want to talk about now is transportation. Getting around campus, getting to and from campus is certainly a common question that we uh, get. You do not need a car. Uh, on campus and a lot of transportation that we have in terms of our campus buses to get around. We're bicycle friendly um, as a campus and we even have our free yellow bike program where you can rent a bike uh, for a couple weeks at a time and utilize that to get around campus and get around the Flagstaff community. Also pictured on this slide is our city bus line, that blue bus uh, that you see there and that cuts through campus and will take you downtown and take you to shopping off campus. As far as the getting to and from campus piece, we're about two hours from Phoenix, and there is the, a shuttle that you can take. Uh, a private company operates a shuttle system that you can take from the Phoenix airport to Flagstaff and get dropped right off on campus. So that's certainly an option. We do have a Flagstaff airport as well. From Flagstaff, you can fly to, down to Phoenix to connect. You can fly to Denver, Colorado, as well as Dallas, Texas. So that's a common question we get. Families want to know how their students going to get to and from campus and get home on the holidays. Uh, so those are some of those options for you. Campus safety is one of our major concerns here on campus. And today that means something quite different than it did even a few short months ago. We want to make sure all students are safe. So that's why we lock our residence halls and students that live in that residence hall use their JAX card or their student ID card to gain access to those halls. One of the most exciting things that I look at almost every day because there's new things being added is our new NAU Safe app. In parents, I did wanna make mention that you can download this app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store as well. 
and program it so it gives you the updates for your student specific campus. On that app, students can track their friends to know when they're gonna arrive, maybe if they're meeting um, at the library or grabbing um, a cup of coffee or food together. They can also report um, a crime tip if they saw something um, on campus or around campus. And if they're at the library studying late at night and they're by themselves and they'd like another student to safely socially distance, walk them back to their residence hall, they can request that on that app as well. It's really the one-stop shop or app for all of campus safety needs. So again, parents, you can definitely download this as well. Next, no matter how you identify or the culture you're a part of, there's a place for you here at NAU. From our Native American Cultural Center, one of my very favorite spots on campus, to our student veteran services and disability resources, just to name a few. Our Office of Inclusion has been hosting diversity dialogues all summer long to really help everyone on campus understand the importance of acceptance and respect in this very tumultuous time um, that we've experienced in the last couple months. We want you to feel at home here at the university and are open to feedback and experiences and, and are hopeful to share those across the campus community. So clubs and organizations are something that I would highly encourage students to get involved with. Right now we've got over 400 clubs and organizations and that number has gone up every year I've been here for the, the 12 years I've been at NAU. You know what's crazy too is that those clubs and organizations, even during the socially distant time where they haven't been able to host the big celebrations and meetings that they've been used to, have come up with some tremendous, tremendously creative way to stay connected. Absolutely. And we've got, within those clubs and organizations, sports clubs, you've got fraternity, sorority life, if those are things that are of interest to you, uh, political-based, faith-based, all kinds of clubs and organizations. And if you come here and you realize that you don't find the right club or organization within those 400 plus, you, a handful of your friends, and then a faculty or staff advisor can create a new club or organization. And Sun Entertainment, we're always bringing entertainment here to campus movies, concerts, guest lecturers uh, here. Certainly we're getting creative in this <laughs> time of uh, social distancing to be able to still provide entertainment opportunities uh, for our students. You'll see a picture there uh, of our dive-in movies. That's a pre-COVID time uh, doing the, the dive-in movies in our Olympic-sized uh, swimming pool. I know they did a drive-in one though, I think this fall a couple times already. You're right, so. yep. So athletics is certainly a part of that college experience, cheering on your fellow lumberjacks. We are NCAA division one for our college athletics. Every student with your ID get in free to all the athletic events. We are traditionally very strong in those distance endurance type sports. Being at 7,000 feet elevation, we've got Olympians coming from all around the world to train. And our men's cross country team, certainly a point of pride for us. They won three straight national titles and our women's swimming and diving team, which competes in the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, has won seven straight WAC titles now. I absolutely love, though, our student athletes get it done not only on the court, on the field, in the pool, but in the classroom, in the community as well. And I want to give you the opportunity to hear from one of our student athletes. So let's throw it to DJ. It's all the classes. It's all the practices. I mean, there's so many points where I, I, really, I really wanted to give up. You know, it was so hard. I just constantly remember my parents saying, if it's, if it's too easy, you know, you're not going to get anything out of it. I can attribute 100% of my success to my parents. Well, my father and I, we both blood, sweat, and tears on the same field. Without NAU, I don't think that I would have the opportunities that I could have in the future. It's really built me and molded me into to what I am now. My name is DJ Arnson. I'm a biomedical science major and chemistry minor, and I'm a lumberjack. So as Chad mentioned earlier, there are really three types of fit. We want to make sure you as a family consider prior to going to any institution. So academic fit, social fit, and the third being financial fit. 
We know that college is a significant investment for the student and the whole family. And we do our best to make sure those costs are predictable. So what you see on the screen are three different tuition rates. One for the residents of Arizona, one for our non-residents, and one for WUE students, W-U-E. And what that stands for is Western Undergraduate Exchange, which I'm gonna explain in just a moment. What you see on the right side of your screen are those additional costs. So, so not things that are necessarily paid to the university, depending on where you choose to live, but things that you need to take into consideration as you're considering the whole cost picture prior to attending any institution. So books and supplies, for example. We know that there are books and supplies that students need each and every term they're enrolled. Sometimes those books and supplies are, are less and sometimes they might be a little more depending on your major and if there's resources to gather online, etc. A number of our faculty really work hard to make sure that those things are, are quite reasonable for students. But things you need to take into account. Now let's get back to that WUI tuition rate. If you reside in one of the yellow highlighted territories or states on your screen, once you're admitted to NAU, you will automatically qualify for that WUI tuition rate. And you see that tuition rate of our current academic year on the screen. All of our tuition rates will be set in mid to late spring by the Arizona Board of Regents. So we will update that information on our websites and our publications, as well as on our slides that, that we're sharing with you when that information becomes available. Important to note here, a number of institutions treat WUI as a scholarship, so an additional application. We do not. You will automatically get this tuition rate once you're admitted to NAU to the Flagstaff campus. So to help with those costs, we have several different scholarship opportunities. And the first one I want to talk about is the top scholarship that we give to our Arizona resident students. We're going to be looking at for a 3.5 or above unweighted core GPA to qualify for the Lumberjack Scholars Award. And we're going to show you the core courses in just a moment. Um, so you'll have an understanding, but it's 16 core courses that we look at for admissions and also utilize for scholarship purposes as well. Also within those 16 core courses, we're looking for no letter grade lower than a B and also no deficiencies in any of those uh, 16 core courses, meaning you took all 16 of those. This is just looking at those courses and the GPA. So ACT uh, scores and SAT scores are not needed for that. And this award is up to full tuition. We have some additional awards as well, which you're seeing on the screen now. For our Arizona residents, for our WUI, those Western Undergraduate Exchange students, and for our true non-residents. Again, we're looking at the unweighted core GPA calculated off of those 16 core courses. And you can see the different levels there that you can be awarded. Want to draw your attention to that test scores are not needed for these scholarships. Uh, we, and, and I know many students, because of the pandemic, maybe their test taking plan was interrupted. Uh, know that you can still be admitted and you also can be considered for scholarships without test scores. That being said, if you have a test score, send it our way. It can only help you, test scores will never hurt you. So if you have one, uh, certainly uh, report that when you are applying. So Chad mentioned those 16 core courses, and that is what you see listed here on the screen. Those four years of English, four of math, three of lab science, two years of social science, with one of those being US American history, two years of the same um, second language in one year of art or CTE. And so that's career and technical education. So lots that can fall under that area as well. As Chad mentioned, test scores are completely optional for you. You don't need them to get admitted to the institution, but as Chad mentioned, they can only help you. So one to make note of that. And if you haven't yet applied, to NAU, you can do so simply by going to nau.edu apply. 
Now we know a number of you that registered with us today have already been admitted to the university. Congratulations. Chad's going to talk through what the next steps are going to be for you to take to secure your spot. Absolutely. So again, I want to echo Annika's congratulations. Those of you that have applied and been admitted to the institution, that's NAU's way of saying yes to you. Your way of saying yes to NAU is by paying that enrollment deposit. So you'll go uh, nau.edu slash accept my offer and pay your enrollment deposit there, $250, uh, to then confirm your spot for this upcoming class. After you've done that, it's going to open up the option for you to do some additional steps. So if you are choosing to live on campus, uh, that housing application will be open uh, this fall, completing priority enrollment, which begins that communication with your academic advisor about uh, exactly confirming what major you want to take. And maybe if you took some uh, AP coursework ahead of time or some college coursework ahead of time, you could report that in there. And then you'll also Register for orientation. Now, this last summer, we did have to pivot to a, a virtual orientation experience, um, and certainly we'll be assessing that, but there will be some sort of orientation experience uh, for you as a student. And for families as well. Absolutely. We know this transition to college is, is significant, certainly for all of you students, but also for you parents and guardians and family members as well. So we do offer an orientation, and that's really what um, that $250 enrollment deposit covers. Um, so there's no additional charges for students or guests to, to attend and experience um, that amazing orientation. Yep, absolutely. And if you're not sure what list of things you need to do, nau.edu slash next steps is going to be the listing of what you need to do. Um, it's been great telling you about NAU. Hopefully... Uh, you've got a sense of if we might be the right fit for you, but there's no better way to find out if uh, we're the right fit than to hear from some more actual students. So we're going to take a little bit of a break here. We're going to wipe down the set uh, here and invite up a couple of our students uh, to join us here and answer some of the questions that you've been emailing in. Great. Thanks so much. Go Lumberjacks. Go Lumberjacks. Go Jacks! This is Northern Arizona University. It's the one with the mountain. Pines, the Dome, the Lumberjacks. It's the one on the Mother Road with a hundred years of tradition, which looks like this, that, or this. A unique place where you can learn here or here. It's really beautiful, I love it. It's a community that cares. Because that's what Lumberjacks are. See, NAU helps people who can look at microorganisms and see global impacts. People who understand helping one person walk moves us all forward. That opportunity is the only thing that can limit achievement. Lumberjacks stand together, passing traditions onto the next generation, sharing the stuff we love, the moments we remember. It's the pride that shapes the university, that shapes us. This is Northern Arizona University. We are proud, we are loyal, we are Lumberjacks. Welcome back. Lots of great questions uh, came in and we're going to have the opportunity to tackle some of those questions. We won't be able to get to all of them, but uh, we have compiled, my team's compiled kind of the themes that came in through, for, from the questions today. As you can see, I've got a couple of students uh, joining on set here and we're going to have an opportunity to meet them first. Uh, let's start with Meg. Can you introduce yourself? Cool. Hi, everyone. My name is Meg. Um, I am currently a junior here at NAU. I'm studying elementary education with an emphasis in science. Um, I'm originally from Chandler, Arizona, and my preferred pronouns are she, her, hers. Hi, I'm Kate Schmidt. I am a sophomore here at NAU. I'm currently studying special education and elementary education. I'm originally from Laramie, Wyoming, and my preferred pronouns are he, him, his. Great. So the first question I'm going to start us off with uh, is about kind of talking about getting involved on campus. So maybe some things that you're involved with on campus and then also some advice for students to, to get involved. Uh, Meg, can you start with that one as well? Yeah, of course. Um, so some things I'm involved with on campus, probably the biggest one I'm involved with is this job um, where I get all of these really cool opportunities to come on panels and talk to all of y'all. Um, but some other really cool opportunities I've had on campus is fraternity and sorority life. Um, so I did go through recruitment and join a sorority my sophomore year up here. 
And that has been a really, really fun experience for me just to meet a lot of different people, get a lot of um, like connections in the world, a good thing to put on my resume. So I definitely recommend looking into fraternity and sorority life if that's what you're interested in. Um, yeah. I am a part of the Ultimate Frisbee Club here at NAU. And for me, that's been a lot of fun. I've gained a lot of new friendships through that. And I've been able to go to different universities as of last year to um, compete against them and meet other people from around the country. And uh, I was able to kind of get involved with that through uh, the campus club fair, which was like at the start of the year, we were able to walk around or look at different uh, different like clubs and what gauged our interest. and. Ultimate Frisbee was one that gauged my interest from the start, and so that is what I started with. So I like this question a lot. It's a very practical question. Uh, best thing you brought with you when you moved to campus, and also something you brought that then you realized you didn't need to bring with you? I see, Meg, I see you, you nodding right <laughs> away, so I think you've got an answer. Yes, uh, I do. Um, I think that I have two things that I brought to campus that I absolutely loved. The number one thing is a Brita water filter. Um, I love cold water, like in my hydro flask and everything. Um, and we just get little mini fridges when you live on, on campus your first year, um, which is really nice. But I didn't like taking up room in the mini fridge, like to make ice and everything. So I thought a Brita filter was really nice to keep cold water, to refill my hydro. Um, and then also the other thing is a heated blanket. Um, I love my heated blanket. I really live for it. Um, I use it way more often than I should, but it's just another layer of protection to like make me feel comfy. Um, and then something I would not have brought is the amount of clothing that I brought, which sounds really silly, um, but there is not a lot of storage in freshman residence halls that you can use for only clothing. Like, you're going to have a lot of other stuff that you're going to want to fit in your room. Um, and I found that I didn't wear at least half of what I brought to school my first year. Um, so definitely bring the necessities, and one of those necessities should be a Brita filter. So for me, I would say my first one is a plant. Um, I know it's a little weird, but I brought a plant my first year and it just kind of brightened up my room, had a nice added color to it, and it kind of made it feel more like my home. And I was able to kind of distract myself from schoolwork if I wanted to just be like, oh, I need to water my plant. Or if I wanted just to be able to have that like, that little bit of nature inside my room just to add that little bit of freshness to it. Um, something I would recommend that, that I personally realized that I did not need was actually my um, car. I personally did realize that a bike did much more for me than a car did. I was able to be active with my bike instead. And with the car, it's, it, everything's so close on campus already. There isn't really that need for a car your first year of college. I like that plant advice. I think that's the first time I've heard the plant advice <laughs> on a panel. And I can tell you during this time of quarantine, social distancing, spending more time at home, uh, my house is starting to turn into a jungle after having <laughs> one plant. So I like that advice. So uh, we'll start with you on this one, uh, Cade. Things that you like to do in your free time. So maybe on campus, around Flagstaff, either of those I think would be good answers here. So. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing that I really like to do is at night, I'm big into astro like not really astronomy. I really like taking night photography, actually. So I like to get out, and there's a lot of places on campus, such as like these fields down at South Campus that are away from most lights, and they're actually really good to see the stars. So I'll kind of sit there and watch the stars, or I'll go out a little ways out of, um, out of town, and I'll just kind of set up a spot in maybe like Buffalo Park and just really enjoy the night sky from there. And then another thing I really like to do is just kind of go hiking around campus or off campus. There's so many areas to go either side. And um, I really, really enjoy doing both of those. Yes. How about for you, Meg? Um, I would say that my favorite thing to do in my free time up here 
um, is just take advantage of the location of Flagstaff. Um, we are in northern Arizona, so we're really close to the Grand Canyon, to other states, even California, I think, depending on the way you drive, can be closer from Flagstaff than it is from the valley, which is a really cool thing. Um, Sedona is really nearby. My friends and I love going to the creek and swimming in the water. Um, this past weekend, we actually went to Utah um, just for the heck of it, um, because it's so close. It was only like a two hour drive. It ended up being closer to go to Utah than like to go down to the valley, um, which is something that I never really had growing up in Phoenix, because um, everything seems pretty spread out and pretty far. So I would say that is definitely my favorite part about going to NAU and what I like to do in my free time. Switching gears a little bit to the, the academic side of things. Um, any tips that you have for being successful academically? Kate, I'll start with you as well. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that I was told even at the st before college was talk to your professors and communicate with them as much as you need to. I, at, when I was a senior in high school, I kind of just was like, yeah, I, sure, talking to professors. There are so many students. Why would they even remember uh, what I'm talking to them about? But as I started going through my first year of college, I realized how important that is and gaining that communication with them, it builds that relationship with your professor so that if you do need help with something, they, they know you by that your name and they know who you are and what, how you study and things like that. So really getting that communication is a huge key in success and it's really helped me throughout my years. And the nice thing about NAU is with their class sizes, being able to be recognized by your professor is not that hard. That's very true. Um, one of my biggest pieces of, advi of advice um, is also to just communicate with your professors. But I think my number one thing that I would want people who are coming into any college to know um, is to be forgiving with yourself. This is a really, really big transition, not only academically, but socially, everything like that. Um, so I think give yourself grace, and if your first semester doesn't go the way you want it to, you have seven more um, to fix it, and you're finally studying your passion and what you want to do. Um, so I think just like remember that, yes, academics are so, so very important, um, but like don't let that become the center of your entire life up here, because then next thing you know, four years will go by, um, and you'll not have done anything else in college. Shifting back to kind of the social side of things, um, as a new student, and most of the people watching this will be new students uh, someday, what's the best way to connect with others? Meg, do you wanna start? Yeah, I can start. Um, I think that the best way to connect with others is just realize that you are not alone. Um, there are literally thousands of people who are coming up here um, who also don't know anyone, who just left their, all of their friends and family at home, um, everything like that. So I think know that you are not alone. You are not the only one looking for friends. You are not the only one in your classes who doesn't know anyone else. Um, and I think that that can be like a really good bonding moment for students is like you sit down next to someone and you're, you kind of just say, I don't know anyone here. <laughs> um, and you guys can bond over it. Um, and communicate about that and a friendship will build. So I think just like, really, like I said, remember that you are not alone in this um, and to just spread your wings. Yeah, that's some really good advice. And I'm gonna add on to that. Like, that's like the biggest thing is when they're, you're not like, you're not the only one that's going through that, but just don't be afraid to reach out to people. I remember one of the first days I was, uh, that I moved in, I walked around the halls, looked at different lobbies and saw people in them and I just introduced myself and I got to know so many different people and through that I decided, uh, they reached out to me, I reached out to them and friendships grew from all sorts of different ways and then different activities on campus can really bring you to other people too. But yeah, really just don't be afraid to reach out to someone at these different activities or just walking around like people are looking just as much as you and you can you never know what will happen from that i've heard the advice which can seem like a, a simple thing but leaving your residence hall room door open and meeting friends that way as mm -hmm. people walk around doing kind of what you were doing kid all right this one i'm going to throw to meg uh can you just talk about campus safety do you feel safe on campus yeah. maybe some of the precautions that use taken there? Yeah, of course. Um, I personally have not really ever felt unsafe on campus, and I think that NAU's precautions are really the reason I haven't felt unsafe. 
Um, my favorite thing that we have is the NAU safety alert. Um, so you can sign up through your phone and even your parents can sign up through your phone. So I know my mom gets all the alerts too. Um, and it sends you any alerts on campus from there being a snow day to there being police activity on campus. Um, and it tells you where the police activity may be and to avoid those areas. And then it also issues an all clear later in the evening when everything is all wrapped up. Um, so I feel like I've always been very aware of what is going on around campus and that's why I have felt very safe. Um, and then another really cool thing that we have are these giant blue light poles. Um, and they, from each one, if you look 360 degrees around you, you can see another one. Um, and so those are meant for if you're walking super late at night and you feel kind of weird or you feel like you see someone following you. Um, you can click those buttons on those light poles and they'll light up and kind of go off and immediately contact the NAU police department. Um, and then by your fourth button that you press, um, the NAUPD will have tracked you and be able to meet you at that fourth light pole, um, which is a really, really cool thing. And when I say they are all over campus, I mean they are all over campus. Um, so I think that's a really big reason that I felt super safe on campus. Yeah. Meg really nailed it on the uh, head there, so I think she covered it all. <laughs> cool. And I will say you could stay at the same blue light, too, and they'd meet you there as yes. well, too. But if you keep moving. If you want to um, keep moving, you yep, can click will, on. We'll find you there. Um, Kate, I'm going to throw this one to you. Uh, can you talk about campus health services and what they offer here on campus? Yeah, so um, campus health is a really awesome uh, place for N at NAU. It's really helpful for students that are looking to get that care for their health that they need. They offer everything up to surgery, so, well, p to surgery. So you can go and get an x-ray if you need to, and then from there they'll, they can get you to the Flagstaff Hospital if you need to. But they also offer counseling services, and as a student that, um, those, that really highlights uh, an important part of student life uh, making sure your mental health is good and that everything is in check and having that opportunity to go and meet with someone who is a professional at what they're doing uh, is a really big thing. And so those are two of the things that they really do offer. They're very, very good with that. Uh, so let's, let's shift gears again here. Uh, is it easy to get a job on campus? Meg, I'll start with you on that. Yeah, um, I found it pretty easy to get a job on campus, honestly. We have this really cool website um, called Handshake, and that is where all of the opportunities to get an on-campus job um, come through. So you can literally apply to like 15 of them one day um, if you wanted. I know when I first came here, that's what I did my one of my first weeks up here. Um, I sat down on Handshake, I put together my little profile, um, and I just applied for anything that interested me. Um, a lot of student, a lot of workers on campus happen to be student workers, so that leaves a lot of opportunity um, for students to get a job. So you could work in the meal office, in pretty much any office on campus, let me just say. But you could also work in like the cafeterias, um, at any of the food we have on campus, um, like I do, you could be a True Blue Ambassador, which is the best job. Um, but yes, a lot of opportunities on campus for jobs for sure. Yeah, and with that handshake, it, I do remember when I first was looking through it, it seemed a little daunting, but it's very easy to use. And they do actually have off-campus job opportunities too listed on it. So if you don't necessarily want to live or work on campus, you can also find jobs off campus or even after you've graduated, they also show opportunities to, uh, to work based off your major. And then I think another really cool thing about being a student worker is that the job will go with your schedule. You are a student first and all your bosses understand that and they work with you to make sure that you can get can succeed in your classes first and then be an employee as well. Yeah, I agree. As far as if you are looking for a job, I always like to recommend to students look for those on campus jobs just because those employers are very understanding um, that you are a student first, as you said there, Kate. So the, the transition to college, we touched on that a little bit, the making friends part and that part. But what was the hardest part about adjusting to college? Um, Kate, I'll have you yeah. start with that one. So a year ago, I was so 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 nervous of leaving my home i had spent 17 years of my life there 
I had no idea what was going to happen when I moved. I was, it's a very unfamiliar place. And as soon as I like moved in, I was so like just nervous. But then I just started meeting people. I got myself out there. Um, and so for me, it was just definitely leaving home and leaving what's familiar for me, but, and leaving my parents, but Flagstaff and NAU itself, there it was felt so friendly and very welcoming, and all the events they put on to make sure that you feel welcome helped a lot with that homesickness. And so that would be for me, that was the homesickness. How about you, Meg? Yeah, I think in addition to the homesickness, um, something that I struggled with and that I know a lot of first year students struggle with um, is holding yourself accountable. Um, your parents aren't here anymore. Your teachers aren't going to call them if you miss class. So it's very easy to wake up for your 8 a.m. and decide, no, thank you. I'm not going to go today. Um, so I think just like adjusting to that transition of like, I'm kind of an adult now and I can make my own decisions um, is really, really difficult. And remembering that you are paying to come here and that this is to get into a career that you want to do. Um, I think remembering the importance of these classes and of these experiences um, is also difficult. Um, but a really good way to overcome that is if you need to, going to NAU counseling. I know that a lot of first year students go for the first semester-ish just to help them transition into school and the homesickness and being away from their family. Um, so that's a really good opportunity. And then like Cade was saying, just like going to activities, staying active, finding friends who like will hold you accountable as well and that you have classes with where you can go to class together and then it feels more normal and you get into a routine. So we've got time for one more question and it's a good one. I know many students watching this are deciding if NAU is that right fit for them and if they're gonna choose NAU. So the question for both of you is, why did you choose NAU? And Meg, we'll start with you on that one. Sweet, I love this question. Um, I chose NAU for a lot of reasons, but I think that the more specific reasons um, are the biggest reasons. So number one, I really wanted to go to an in-state school. I'm from Chandler, Arizona. Um, I really liked the idea of being far from home, but not so far that I can't still come home for the weekends and not have to hop on a plane. Um, and then I came up to visit NAU my junior year of high school, and truly my life was just changed. Um, I loved the trees, I loved the chill in the air, um, how clear the air was, and um, on my first tour up here, we were told that, and, or that Flagstaff is a dark sky city, um, which to me just was the coolest thing. So that means that all of our light poles face down and have like amber colored lights so you can see the stars really well. Um, and as someone from Phoenix, we don't see the stars very well down there. Um, so that was super exciting. And then the other kind of flip side of it is that I am a first generation student. Um, so NAU um, was so easy to follow. The processes were really good. The ambassadors that I interacted with were super helpful. There were really good admissions officers. Um, so the whole experience seemed a lot less scary to me. Um, and then the last part kind of is the financial aid that NAU has. To me, um, as a first generation student, it just seemed like NAU wants to make it so that students are able to come to a higher education, um, which really spoke to me because I had always feared that I wouldn't be able to afford to go. Um, but NAU really makes the point to support their students and give really good financial aid and give the same opportunities to all, which really stood out to me. That was really well said. For me, um, I grew up in Wyoming. There's a whole lot of nothing there. It's true. Um, so I was not looking to go to school in state. So I instead looked out of state and I only was looking at one other school until I decided, you know what, I'm going to look online, just search special education schools. And NAU was actually the first one to pop up on my little web browser. And so I, I clicked on it. I was like, okay, Arizona is cool. Sure. <laughs> so I, I clicked on the link and I was looking at it. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of trees for Arizona. And then I was like, oh, it's at 7,000 feet. And I was like, okay, this is very similar to my hometown. So I kept looking at it and I was looking at what they offered and they're kind of like how they were going about things. So I decided to apply um, I got accepted and then I was like, you know what? I need to visit this school to see what it's like. I remember stepping foot on the campus for the first time. Everyone was so nice. Everyone just 
like they they were excited to see people and they were help, very helpful, willing to go out of their way to help you. And then I stepped foot into the ambassador office and everyone was like super excited to see people and very wanting to get them to where they're going, get them checked in. And so after that, I like left with this huge smile on my face. I had all the information I needed. And I know I decided to go to NAU the day I toured. And then here I am. I always love hearing that, that why story from any of the students that I talk to uh, here on campus. So th thanks for sharing those. And hopefully this program today has helped you understand um, if NAU might be that right fit for you. I will say hearing from other students is always a big part of that deciding factor. And we gave you the opportunity to hear from a couple of students today, but I will also say that on our, uh, the NAU Instagram account, uh, we frequently have students taking over those accounts, answering questions uh, there. So if your question didn't get answered today, I would definitely point you that direction to be able to have some interaction with some of our current students. So stick around. We're going to take another uh, quick break here and wait down the set, and then Annika and I will be back out on set. Um, thanks, uh, Cade. Thanks, Meg, uh, for giving us some insight into uh, the life of being a lumberjack here. Thank you. So stay Thank tuned. Thank you. What we're trying to figure out is relationships between communities of microbes that live in mammal guts and Alzheimer's symptoms. Being able to possibly reduce patients' and families' suffering by learning more about the disease mechanisms would be tremendously satisfying. My name is Chris and I'm a lumberjack. Thank you again for joining us for this morning's Discover NAU. Remember, we like those three types of fit, academic, social, and financial, and your student success is our number one priority. We know we presented a lot of information, so if you want to review any of the videos or visit us virtually, you can do so at nau.edu slash virtual. A ton more videos from our students, faculty, and other team members to help you understand if NAU could be the right fit for you. Regardless, we wish you the best of luck in a successful academic year, and thank you again for joining us. Absolutely. And if you've got individual questions, certainly reach out to, on email, admissions at nau.edu. And also, we are willing to schedule individual appointments with you, be it over Zoom or over the phone. And you can do that by emailing admissions.appointment at nau.edu. And we're happy to sit down virtually with you as a family and talk through any of those things that can help determine if NAU is that right fit for you. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be healthy, and we hope to see many of you on campus in the future. Go Lumberjacks! <laughs>